Hi, everybody. This is Kamira with ImperfectLife.com, where I talk about navigating life after pet loss through inspiration and art. And today I wanted to talk about a topic a little bit more lighthearted, 10 creative art therapy exercises to try at home. So according to psychologytoday.com, uh, art therapy involves the use of creative techniques such as drawing, painting, collage, coloring, or sculpting to help people express themselves artistically and examine the psychological and emotional undertones in their art. What is art therapy used for? Art therapy helps children, teens, adults explore their emotions, improve self-esteem, manage their addictions, relieve stress, and improve symptoms of anxiety and depression, and a mechanism to cope with physical illness or disability. Uh, that's according to psychologytoday.com. Just wanted to share that with you. Also, any advice or tips I give in this video, these opinions are my own. I'm not like a licensed therapist or doctor, but these are just helpful tips, some of which I have used personally that have helped me in my journey to finding healing after pet loss. So as you know, I'm a person that loves to create art and use it as a way um, to de-stress, find healing and calm. So let's get right into this video, the top 10 creative art therapy exercises you can do and try at home right now. The first one is pottery. You can take a ceramics class. There's two ways you could do this actually. You can go to your local, you know, community, neighborhood and explore taking a ceramics class or a pottery class, do it that way. Or there are stores or places where you can buy the ceramics that are already um, the kiln fired and finalized and you can purchase them and paint them in the store or purchase them and paint them at home. So that's one way, one creative thing you can do that uh, you can use as an art therapy mechanism and use that at home. It's a fun and creative way to express yourself. A second one you can do is you can make a collage. You can make a collage with photographic memories with your pet, whether they are alive or not. But if you are someone that has experienced pet loss, this is a great way to memorialize your pet. You can use all the photos you had over the years, make a collage or a scrapbook and put that together and have a photographic uh, memory book. And for the pets that are still here with you, it's still a great idea to do that. You can maybe capture some of your most pivotal moments, birthdays and holidays, maybe even um, family events like weddings or the birth of a baby. So that's a great way to uh, commemorate and memorize, memorialize your pet. Let's try number three. Third one, you can draw a picture that represents your perfect world. You know, your utopia place. Oh, your imagination is, it's up to you, whatever your wildest dreams. Maybe it's a dream vacation or a dream trip, something on your bucket list. So number four, Create a painting that represents your childhood. Maybe you have a favorite memory from your childhood. I know uh, for me, uh, one of the things that way back in the day before, you know, computers <laughs> and um, technology took over our lives, we were the type of kids that would go ride our bikes, go climb trees, go play in the fields. So I specifically remember like, running in the fields or running outside and you would see tons of weeds or I guess you call them, I don't know if they would call them dandelions, but the yellow flowers, tons of them um, and plenty of sneezing to boot. But <laughs> those are one of the um, childhood memories I remember. Um, but yeah, you can reflect on your childhood or another pivotal moment from your past. Maybe use watercolors or paints to put that to paper. So that's number four. Number five, make a vision board. I love vision boards. I used to be the type of person that did resolutions every new year, but now I actually changed to just making a vision board. I put my intentions on the vision, on the vision board on what I want to occur, 
for the coming year. And I just put that to paper. I used to use a cork board. You can get like a cork board, um, maybe at the craft store like Michael's. But now what is an easier and actual, um, also more economical, fun way you can make a vision board is create a digital vision board. Like this one is an example. You can create a wallpaper for your laptop or a wallpaper template for your phone. Put images of goals and things you want to either accomplish or make sure you make priority throughout the year. And keep that, you'll have that on your desktop always in front of you. You'll always be able to see it or on your phone. I use this design. I created this one using um, uh, the canva.com using their uh, graphic design drag and drop technology. So it was really easy to do. I will leave an affiliate link in the description box below. If you're interested in using Canva, they have so many great tools and um, graphic design um, elements that you can use, not only just for creating wallpaper, but you can create um, digital graphic designs. You can create pins for those that are bloggers. You can create pins. You can create templates. So it's really versatile. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. So that's number five. Number six, make a dream catcher. Dream catchers are actually um, go back as far as I know, it has a Native American reference, but um, dream catchers are kind of cool. They're meant to capture your dreams, but you can learn more about the history of dream catchers um, on my blog. I will leave a link in the description below, but that's just number six. Number seven, draw a scene from one of your dreams, or if you really want to, one of your nightmares. <laughs> Um, one of the things that is interesting about art is it is a way to express our inner emotions, whether that's happy or sad. And art is really um, one of the things that is subjective. Everyone has a different opinion and interpretation. So maybe you have been having dreams lately. You can put that to paper. This one is an example. This one looks like a mysterious magical forest or something a little bit spooky even with the lanterns hanging down. But you can put those thoughts and images of what you recollect on, on paper, whether drawing or painting um, or even those that like um, a different meaning like watercolor too. So that's just another method you can use and try at home. Number eight, create a map of all your personal collections. This is a great one to do with children um, or your loved ones. Like you could create a family tree or even a friend tree. Sometimes friends are our family. So that's another one you can do. And just a reminder of who your close connections are put to paper. Number nine, create your own website or your own blog. One of the ways that I found healing and was cathartic after my cat Dusty passed away, I decided to start a blog. I had all those feelings of guilt and wanted to write about my experience navigating life after loss and put my pen to paper digitally. So that I definitely highly recommend um, starting a blog. Before you do, I would recommend doing your thorough research of what it takes to start a blog, maintain a blog. So I don't want you to get in over your head. If it's just a means to create like a digital online journal, that's something else. Um, but if you're looking to create a website, definitely do your research, the pros and cons and everything that's involved and make sure you're ready for the commitment. And last but not least, 10, draw your safe place. Create a place that makes you feel safe from the world. For, this is great for young children. You can have them, you know, put to paper through crayons, coloring, painting, or drawing. You know, put to paper what is your safe place? What is your safe haven? So those are 10 things that 
um, you can try at home that are creative exercises and that are easy to do at home. Did you recognize any of these activities that you tried in the past or were looking to try? Let me know in the comments below. You can check out the full post on my blog at imperfectlife.com to read this more in detail and get more information of activities you can do at home and how they can help you find a place of healing or just a way to de-stress and have fun at low cost for free at home. So be sure to just subscribe to this channel and I hope you enjoyed this content. Be sure to visit the blog at imperfectlife.com for more inspirational content and tools and tips to navigating life after pet loss. Have a great rest of the afternoon and until next time, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.